In this instructional video, trained personnel will demonstrate how to prepare and apply a livestock brain onto Watman FTA cards in a laboratory setting. This procedure can be adapted as required for use on a variety of wild or domestic animal species which have suspected rabies infections. Before beginning this procedure, you must familiarise yourself with and adhere to the biosafety requirements for working with rabies in your country. It is recommended that only people vaccinated against rabies virus should perform this protocol due to the potential exposure to contaminated material and waste. Please consult a medical doctor immediately if you suspect you've been accidentally exposed to rabies virus. For samples contributed through the current collaboration between OESA and the University of Glasgow, a diagnostic test is required to confirm the absence of bovine spongiform encephalopathy or BSE from brain samples prior to conserving samples for rabies sequencing. Samples must be negative to BSE by an ELISA screening test and in the case of any doubtful or suspicious samples, histochemistry should be performed as a confirmatory test. Samples positive to BSE must not be used with FDA cards and should be handled, stored or discarded according to national guidelines. It is recommended to perform the dissection and homogenization of this procedure inside a microbiological safety cabinet. Good laboratory practice using double gloves and highly sterile technique is also essential to prevent exposure to the virus and contamination between samples. Specific materials required for this protocol include Watman FTA cards, pouches or Ziploc bags, desiccants such as silica beads, a dissecting board, and sterile wooden swabs or homogenizer equipment. General laboratory items include disposable scalpels or sterilized non-disposable scalpels or scalpel handles with disposable sterile blades, forceps, two milliliter cry vials, phosphate buffered saline, micro pipette with one milliliter filter tips, sharps disposal container, latex or nitrile gloves, and a permanent marker. Decontamination substances should be used such as bleach or one molar sodium hydroxide as an inactivating solution, sterilized water to remove bleach and sodium hydroxide, 70% ethanol to sterilize surfaces and equipment, absorbent roll and autoclave bags. When working with multiple brain samples, it is important to complete the entire protocol separately each time to prevent cross-contamination. 70% ethanol should be used to sterilise items placed into the hood before use. First, pre-label sterile 2 ml cry vials and blank FDA cards with matching identification numbers and the original date of brain sample collection from the dead animal. Prepare one milliliter of sterile phosphate buffered saline or PBS into each pre-labeled vial. Prepare your working station and the brain to be sampled from. Using a sterile scalpel and forceps, slice the brain in two areas. The first slice through the spinal cord, and the second slice through the brain stem and cerebellum. Cut tiny pieces of tissue from the spinal cord, brain stem and cerebellum. You need a total tissue of approximately one centimeter squared, which weighs approximately 50 to 75 milligrams. Using the scalpel, place the brain tissue into the vial with PBS. The liquid level in the vial will rise to approximately 1.5 millilitres. Once there is enough brain tissue in the vial, dispose of the scalpel safely in a sharps container. If disposable scalpels are unavailable, blades should be safely disposed of in a sharps container and handles should be sterilised with concentrated bleach or a one molar solution of sodium hydroxide for one hour. Rinse thoroughly with water and then autoclaved before use on other samples. Reusable forceps must also be sterilised and autoclaved the same way between samples. 
Between samples and before moving on to the next step of the protocol, work surfaces, materials and the outsides of individual vials must be cleaned and sterilised with 0.2% bleach or sodium hydroxide to prevent cross-contamination. Use sterilised water to remove leftover bleach and sodium hydroxide residue after cleaning and change outer gloves before beginning the next sample or homogenisation step. Once the brain tissue has been collected into the individual vial, homogenise the brain tissue. One of the easiest methods is by using the wooden ends of two sterile swabs together. Make sure to minimise generating bubbles which may expel rabies particles into the air. Homogenise the brain tissue in the PBS liquid for at least one minute until cells are separated and cell membranes destroyed. Other options to physically homogenise brain tissue samples include using bead beaters or specialised homogeniser machines. A vortex mixer is not recommended. Next, use a micropipette to slowly prepare approximately 125 microliters of sample and drop liquid in a concentric circular motion onto the pre-labeled FTA card, taking care to avoid puddles and liquid seeping through onto the back of the card. Once the tissue sample makes contact with the FTA card, the filter paper lyses cell membranes and denatures proteins but protects nucleic acids from degradation. The FDA cards should be left to dry for at least one hour at room temperature, preferably overnight and away from sunlight. Leftover brain tissue can be stored at minus 80 degrees Celsius for permanent storage or in a frost-free minus 20 degrees Celsius freezer if a minus 80 degrees freezer is unavailable. Discarding samples should be a last resort. Samples for disposal should be labelled as contaminated waste and placed into autoclave bags for disposal via an autoclave and or an incinerator completed samples can be stored together in a pouch or in Ziploc bags. It is highly recommended to insert desiccant silica beads inside the pouch to keep the cards as dry as possible. For long-term storage, it is recommended to store the cards in the Ziploc bag with the desiccant in a frost-free minus 20 degrees Celsius freezer or a minus 80 degrees Celsius freezer. Sample FDA cards can be posted using regular or express mail without the need for specialised packaging.